Now, so, as you can see, I'm going to be talking today about Canadian music. It's not so much of a current event as it was when I picked the topic, because I just went to a concert that was a Canadian band and featured a couple of Canadian bands opening. But, it's, I think it's a very interesting topic, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this, so. I forgot to grab the clicker. Oh, no. So, first off, I'll start off with some of our most successful, and some of these are also some of my favorites. I've got to see three of the bands you're going to see up here. Uh, first one, anybody recognize these guys? Bachman Turner Overdrive? Come on, people. Some of the best. I've seen them at Grey Cup a couple of years ago. Uh, right here, up top here, this is going to get difficult. This is Neil Young, another amazing, legendary Canadian artist. Avril Lavigne, another one. Cole's not happy about that. Oh, I'd rather uh, Avril Lavigne than Neil Young. But. Alanis Morissette. I found the clicker. Did you plug it to your computer? I did. Maybe I didn't plug it in far enough. I'll just keep going with this thing. We got Celine Dion, another amazing Canadian artist. Some of you might not agree with that, but she does have an amazing voice and she's talented. So if you think that's wrong, then you're wrong. <laughs> um, Another one here, we got Gordon Lightfoot. I'm not too familiar with most of his music, but I do know my parents love him. Uh, right here, we got uh, blah, 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 Keith, Brian Adams. I was going to say Keith Richards. I don't know. Uh, he's, I, I also got to see him at the Grey Cup a couple of years ago. There's a funny story behind that. If I get time, I'll tell you that. Uh, one of my favorites here is Sam Roberts' band, and they got a song I'll play for you. It's not going through. That's okay. Uh, I'll skip that then. Uh, what, they're one of my favorites. They're an alternative rock band. They've come out early 2000s. Got to see them at the same time I seen him. Uh, another one, Our Lady Peace. I'm not sure who don't know them. They're one of my odd, absolute favorites. The song Innocent, it makes me think about it every single time I hear it. Uh, this one's a personal favorite of mine. This, they made huge headlines last, or two, or sorry, in 2011, when they made the cover of Rolling Stone as the first unsigned band to make the cover of Rolling Stone, Saskatchewan's own Sheepdogs, <laughs> born and raised in Saskatchewan. Uh, so those are some of my personal favorites and some very legendary Canadian artists. Um, um, <laughs> there's Drake too, I won't, I'm not a big Drake fan, I understand that he is very talented, but he didn't have his greatest moment here. Our highest selling Canadian artist of all time is Shania Twain. She had the uh, highest selling album in the world in, I think, 2003. Uh, also, now, we're not, I know we're Canadian. It's close to being perfect, but there is things that we would rather forget, like Nickelback, obviously. Uh, we've got this other person. Uh, <laughs> this, yeah, he's unfortunately Canadian. And to everyone right now, I apologize for what is about to be stuck in your head for the next, the rest of the day. <laughs> Carly Rae Jensen, call me baby. I'm sorry. I had to throw it in there. Okay, enough of the goofy stuff. So, what is, how is Canadian music re regulated? How do guys like this, how do all these artists actually become popular? What is it that brings them up? So, obviously everything with Canadian music, Canadian content is regulated through the CRTC. And... Normally, I am not crazy about the CRTC. They, a lot of their television regulations I'm not crazy about. The things they're trying to do to regulate the internet I'm not crazy about. As for radio, though, I love the way they regulate the radio. I absolutely love it because there is a lot of amazing, amazing Canadian bands out there that don't get, to, don't get their message out, don't get their music out through a lot of conventional uh, stations. So what they do is... that. The CRTC has special regulations set for different kinds of stations. Examples are the ones on the screen here. The 35% of all music played on popular radio stations has to be for, uh, ha is reserved for Canadian content. It's usually reserved within a week. So 35% of the music within a week has to be Canadian content. 50% for anything owned by the CBC. Uh, as for all of these specialty stations, these are... This was really interesting because I went on the CRTC website and I found out, I was looking at all the kinds of regulations they have set, all the weird different ways they regulate this. And I found out that certain specialty stations don't have anything near close to this. Like your big rock stations, your big pop stations, those ones, those will have your 35% uh, 
and that I'm not sure about country stations, they were never really mentioned specifically, but anything like your jazz or your blues or anything like that, they're only a 10% regulation right there. Only 10% of the music you hear on a jazz station or on a blues station will be Canadian content. I found that kind of interesting, but it was, it was kind of cool. Because the CRTC, the way they work is, they're, what they're trying to do is they want to make sure that everything, one can hear the amazing content that is coming from Canada. Because I truly believe that Canadians produce some of the most amazing music in the world. We do. You, the problem is, is we don't always get to hear it. But because of the CRTC, we do. The CRTC does an amazing job with their radio. I love the way they work the radio. Uh, because of the CRTC, we get to hear a lot of amazing content uh, coming up. Uh, examples are USS. They have probably the coolest name for a band ever. It's Ubiquitous Synergy Seeker. I don't know what it means, but it sounds amazing. Uh, I got to see these guys, uh, the Poor Young Things, a couple weeks ago, and North Coat with Cole, uh, and the Glorious Sons were there too. Coleman Hell's got a really popular song right now called Two Heads. I'm not sure if you guys have heard that one. Uh, but it all kind of wraps up into this one thing here at the end. What identifies us, what is Canadian music? What identifies can a Canadian song? Because if you look at all the artists I've talked to you about, all of our things, all the people I've said, all the things I've mentioned, what is it that makes a song Canadian? What is it that you can hear in a song that makes you think, I think this is a Canadian song. I don't think this is from the States or England. or Because ca Canadian music doesn't really have a distinct sound like a lot of other countries do, right? And I think the thing about Canadian music is that it is, it, it is exactly that. It doesn't have a distinct sound. It's so unique. Every single band, every single song, every, everything you hear is just, it's our own thing. It's so different. And every single artist you hear puts so much passion into everything they sing. And that's what I love about Canadian content. That's what I love about it. It's, it starts kind of slow, but it, it's so much, there's so much passion into every lyric and every song and every strum of the guitar you hear. That's why I love Canadian music. That's all I got to do.